you line up alphabetically according to your profession. So what you do with your time. Uh, I gotta go up front. Special ed. Teacher ESL. Water resources engineer. Ooh, right. good job, guys. All right, so if you, as you take your seats, if you haven't yet, make sure you grab a binder from that back table and then you can grab your slot and we'll keep going. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, 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 uh,
wondering what we're going to be doing tonight. Uh, if you look in your binder, the first uh, section is the welcome packet. And if you flip to that uh, first page, it gives you a little bit of a schedule. So we built in time for people to be late and other things to go wrong. So <laughs> it worked out perfectly, right? Um, so for the first part here, we're going to actually have Paul. Uh, who's one of our interns this year and has been in Opera for a couple of years, come up and talk just a little bit about our vision of Opera, why we're doing what we're doing, um, and lead us through a little devotional for Ephesians 4. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to come up, we're just going to walk through some of the details, <coughs> the boring part, but also the part that you need to know to make sure that you make it successfully through this program. So I'll try to be brief about it. All the information will be in your binder, but I also know that many of you will bring this binder home and put it on a shelf and probably not look at it again. So I just want to make sure we go through it in person while you're here um, and give you an opportunity to ask any questions you might have. Uh, and then after that, we're going to give you some time to meet your cohort. So if you don't know who your cohort members are or what they look like, feel free to come up to me at that point and I will help you get matched up with those people. <coughs> Um, and when we do that, we're going to kind of spread out throughout the building. You can use anywhere. Upstairs, there's kind of, there's some areas with couches, or you can go to the sanctuary. Feel free. Um, and then lastly, we're going to have Benji come up and talk about curriculum, uh, talk about kind of what to expect next for our next meeting and the time in between then. Uh, and then if you have any questions about off-road or about uh, your cohorts or any of that kind of stuff, we'll have time to talk through those. Sound good? All right, so Paul, why don't you come on up? Okay. Welcome to Opera. You made it. I am going to start. My name's Paul. I am a Trek One intern. And I'm going to start quickly with just a joke that my mother-in-law told me. <laughs> Did you hear about the one-armed fisherman? He caught a fish this big. <laughs> okay. Let's get started. Let's look at the mission of why we do opera. Why are you guys here? Why are we here? Um, so I'll just read this very quickly. Uh, LEI Offroad provides an intentional and structured pathway for leadership development in areas of biblical thinking, Christ-like character, and ministry skill for those in the church. Okay. Um, so here at Hope, we really value leadership development um, and the church's role. We really value the church's role in building up leaders. Um, but that's why you guys are all here. You guys are hungry to be built up as leaders, to go out in your families, your communities, your relationships, and that's exciting. Um, so let's talk about the three pillars of opera and LDI. I just want to hear what, what you guys think when you think of these terms. We'll start with biblical thinking. When you hear the phrase biblical thinking, what comes to mind? No answer to beneath us. What do you think of it? I like it. Thinking through the lens of the gospel. What else? Memorizing scripture. Memorizing scripture. I like that. Uh, theology applied daily. That I like a lot. Yeah. Theology applied daily, right? Um, anybody else? When I think of biblical thinking, yeah, I, I agree. All of those. Understanding God's word more deeply is, is a huge part of how we go about our lives, how we find purpose, how we figure out how to move forward. Um, what comes to mind, here's a good one, I like this one, Christ-like character. Anybody? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? <laughs> Literally, right? I know it's corny, but seriously. Okay, what else? That's not corny. Christ-like Gospel application. Gospel application. So, we're looking at the gospel, what we think, what we believe, and how do we live it in our character. Yeah, that's a big one, I think. Living lives that reflect the truth of God's word. Um, living out what we believe. What about 
Well, this is kind of a tricky one. Ministry skills. What comes to your mind when you think about ministry skills? Evangelism. Evangelism. Yeah. Good listening. Good listening. Transferability. Can you expand on that? So, the ability to, I guess maybe it's more well, but teach well. Yeah, the ability to teach well, right? Um, I think similar, just being able to hold a conversation about your faith with someone, and, and even if you're not teaching, but just hold your own and yeah. talk about what you believe logically and in a way that makes sense. Right, just representing your views, yeah. Something about often, often tell people, sometimes you know where they're at. Yeah. Yeah, what I think ministry skills, just like um, being able to serve others, being able to build them up, being able to encourage them, um, helping others to understand what we believe, like you said, and, and communicating that, and helping them to live it out, too. Um, so we are going to turn to, can you that? Um, <laughs> we're going to turn in your binder, you have this, um, or there we go, we have it. Right in front of us, we're going to look at uh, Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 16. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to just quickly pray for us. Father, we thank you for Off-Road LBI and for a place to be built up and to be raised up as better leaders so that we can proclaim your glory. Would you reveal to us through your word and through the Holy Spirit more and deeper insight into how we can live out your hope and your plan for us so that Jesus' name be glorified. Pray in his name. Amen. Okay, can I get a volunteer with a beautiful voice to please read this passage for us? Thanks, sir. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, and evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become, more, and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So as we look at what we're here to do in Off-Road LBI, one of the pillars is biblical thinking. We look at this text, um, what do we see, where do we see the importance of growth, uh, the importance of growth in biblical thinking in this text? Where do we see the importance of that? Say verse 13. Um, kind of cross contrast, in my opinion, is us all being like infants, like as we're born into the world. Like Christ wants us to continue to grow in like a mature faith, yeah. from childlike to more mature faith in the yeah. world. When we see maturity in this text, what does that look like? Sunday school answers five. Being like Jesus. Um, okay, what else do we see about biblical thinking? Why is it important to grow in the area of biblical thinking? I think verse 14 is uh, part of that. Um, biblical thinking uh, counteracts the, uh, you know, the thinking of the world where every wind or teaching and cunning craftiness will be able to uh, you know, stand up against that, think through that, be able to um, you know, brush that off or uh, 
right? Yeah, being able to hear something and to hold it up against the truth of God's word and say whether or not we accept that or reject that or what we think about that. Yeah, absolutely. What else do we see? Anything else about the importance of growing in biblical truth? It changes your view of God and your relationship with Him. So that um, enables you to not only speak the truth, but to speak it as He would speak it in love. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 14, um, it's talking about not being tossed back and forth by the wave, going here and there by every, every different wind of teaching. So that's it. Yeah. I think about like, I think the, the in this text, He's talking about like a bird or a child, uh, and they just like a bird flying against a strong wind, just getting blown about. Uh, but yeah, being being growing up in that, being able to stand against false teaching, incorrect teaching, um, and the lies that sometimes we face in our own day to day life. Where do we see the importance of Christ-like character in this text? Verse 50, Jesus is speaking the truth and love. That's huge. I think every time you see Jesus speak, it's always in love and in the correct manner with the correct tone. It's yeah. necessary for that situation. So I think it's a good part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Telling people the truth, but in a loving way. That's very Christ like. Absolutely. What else do we see? I think uh, 15 plays a part in that. Um, I think that last part, like as each part does its work as we kind of grow um, our minds and our body and experience and like the word, it'll kind of, I think, care in how we look at, you know, um, how the word will be applicable to our lives um, and, and where I think it can enrich and support others as well. So. Absolutely. That uh, community piece, that, that Christ like character. I mean, we really believe this here at home, that that happens through growth in community. And, yeah, we see that in verse 16, that we build ourselves up in love, that we work together in the body to become these mature, Christ-like people. Uh, and that's, I think, growing to maturity, we see here, is, is how we then become better ministers. Um, in this... Uh, idea in the text, the, this was the idea that Jesus nourishes and cherishes us as his church so that we can do the same to one another uh, and build this body up. Uh, and that's what we're called to. We're called to maturity. That's why we do something like opera. Because we want to be <clears throat> mature. Uh, and I, after I read this quote today, there's no miser more miserable person than a half-hearted Christian. This, this kind of stuff, this off-road, um, I just want to make a quick point. This is how we grow. Um, so one thing that I would like to do and encourage you guys to do this year is to not treat off-road as I have to. Treat off-road as I get to. Um, and that can change but sometimes the homework, sometimes... Being faithful, being on time, getting to the meetings can become like a chore. But realizing that we get to, and we get to be with one another and, and help one another grow up. When we look at this text, what do we see about the role of ministry skills? Yeah, we need each other. We need our different giftings. 
um, we need each supporting ligament so that we can grow up and grow into that mm. true body. Um, thinking more about the cosmic body. That we, yeah, we build each other up and love. And as our body grows, as the body grows, we start to glorify God more and more and we add members to the body. And as Brian talked about today, uh, the name of our king gains renown. The one who has redeemed us gains the renown that we know that he deserves. And that's exciting. That he, and I look at, um, in the very first verse here, Ephesians 4.11, that Christ himself gave. That when Jesus proclaimed victory by going to the cross for sin, standing in our place and paying the penalty for sin, and God vindicated him by raising him from the dead, saying, you have done it, you are my king, he exalted him, and in his exaltation, Christ gave us the opportunity to join in his work of making all things new. That's amazing. And that's exciting. And that's what we get to do. That's part of what Offroad is about, is being built up so that we can be better at spreading that good news and living it out in our own lives. Um, so yeah, the, the gifts that we have are Christ's spoil from his triumph. They're his victory gifts that he gives to us. And we get to do something like this and be built up so that we can use those gifts. Um, and then the rule of Christ is extended through our leadership. That we get to have kingdom impact through what we do and how hard we approach and, what, and how we faithfully approach off-road and meeting together, caring for one another, being accountable to one another. Yeah, this is a great opportunity. Uh, does anybody else have any big picture takeaways? Anything else that they see in the text that is just standing out that they want to share? Yeah, success and there's a tendency I think in ministry to think about you know your bank account like how's giving are we like is it, where are we on the graph you know how, how are butts in the pews like small group attendance all that kind of thing and one of the things that I took out of that conversation and as a landing point was this idea that what we really care about at Hope is people being transformed to become more like Jesus every day and disciple them that's what we care about. We and so, you know, when we think about the dashboard of success, how's Hope Community Church doing? How are we doing? This is this, you know, the commitment of 50 people 
to spend a year going after Jesus and in community and to grow, that's what really excites uh, the elders of hope. And this is this is the kind of thing we want to dash for when we think about success. Um, so I'm super pumped. This is I think off road is one of the coolest things that's happening at Hope. I've always thought that. I th and and the, the last little thing I say, I'll say is because I think it really breaks down this idea that ministry is. I love Julie, but ministry is only what Julie's doing, right? Um, or what or what Paul, you know, it's only full time. It's only for people who get paid by the church. And that's just not what Scripture says. God would have us all be sent out. Um, and this off road program is just a great picture of that and a great sort of step to send people out into all those different professions as image bearers of Jesus. Um, so super excited to journey with you guys this year um, and really appreciate Benji and Julie and all the staff, Paul, all the folks who make who do a ton of work to make this happen. This is a really great program. It's all it's but it, it's gone like this and it's in uh, a large part because of their efforts and all the, the time and stuff they put into it. So thank you guys, and yeah, we're excited. Cool. All right, we'll try one more time for our other interviews. Sarah, so I would love to tell you about that. Thank you. Hey, Sarah. Hi, 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 Sarah
Uh, but if they're not, we may reach out to you if you miss more than two, just to have a discussion about is LDI off-road really the best fit for you right now? Because you really won't get the full experience if you're not here and able to participate. So again, not because we want to shave you, but because we think that you, you really can get more out of it from being here. Um, so we will keep track of those. We also ask that you don't miss more than four cohort meetings. So the time that you have with your cohort group is also very important. Again, we love community at Hope, right? We joke that it's our middle name. Uh, and so we think there's a lot of value in you getting together with your groups to talk through the material that you're reading and then to reflect on the session uh, and how it can apply to your life. So we have asked the cohort leaders to kind of keep track, generally speaking, of how often you're missing. And again, we give you a leeway. We understand life happens. But if you do get to a point where you're kind of really inconsistently coming to your meetings, your leader may sit down and talk with you just to say, like, hey, what's going on? You know, is there something in life that's preventing you from getting here? Is it the location that we're meeting at? Is there some way we can help you so that you can be there more often? Or is this just not the best time for you to do LDI offering? So know that that's in effect. Uh, we don't want to be scary about it, but we do want to hold you guys accountable to really getting the most out of this thing. Other fun things. Oh, yes. If yeah. you do miss a large group, will, um, will you be videoing them again this year and you still would be expected to watch that then? Yes, that's I a great question. I try to get them up by the end of the week, like next right. Friday, but with our internet, sometimes that doesn't matter. <laughs> uh -huh. Uploading videos takes a long time. <laughs> Yeah, so what they're talking about is we do, as you can see back there, we video record all of these sessions just so that if you do have to miss for something, if you're sick, if you know you have some kind of unexpected thing come up, you can watch it. And you are expected to so that you can still go to your cohort meetings um, and still participate in the conversations there. So we do post those all on the city group. How many of you are on the city? Yay. How many of you are in the off-road city group that I invited you all to? All right, if you do not have your hand up, please come talk to me after and we will get it figured out because you do need access to that to see the video recordings and to see all of the materials. So it will be important that you can get on there. All right, we have a really fun thing, payment. Uh, so our, we do charge some for off-road. Uh, the cost goes towards getting new materials. So sometimes we'll be handing out books for homework. Um, and then we also do our retreat in January, which is no extra cost to you. So the payment throughout the year goes towards all of those different things. Um, and it is $25 a month uh, or $225 for the whole year. So you can pay up front. In fact, we encourage you to because I think it helps us. Uh, you have a little bit more buy-in to doing your work and being here and all those kind of things. Uh, also, it's just easier. I know for me, it's easier to just do it once and then not have to remember every single month. Um, but you can do it monthly, too, if you prefer to do that way. And at Hope, we always say, if money is an issue, we don't want it to be an issue. So if you're thinking about the cost and you're like, man, I don't know, you know, my job situation changed recently or my living situation changed recently, and I just don't know if I'm going to be able to pay it, please do not hesitate to email me or Rob or Benji uh, and just talk to us about it. We can do a scholarship. Uh, we can work something out. So we never want money to be a barrier. So please do not hesitate to talk to us if that becomes a problem. Uh, but otherwise, you can pay. Uh, you can either give us a check and write LDI Off-Road in the memo line, or you can pay online. It's written in here, and it's posted in the city, so if you need to be reminded, it's just hopecc.com slash off-road tuition. So we made it a little easier for you this year by giving a, a website that you can easily remember, one that does not have all the letters on the end of it. So. Uh, and then lastly on here, you just got our contact info. So me and then... Rob and Benji, do you want to stay up and introduce yourself? Since Rob, Rob was the wonderful parking master out there who saved the day. So thank you, Rob. I don't know about saving the day, but uh, somebody made a couple thousand dollars off of us. <laughs> <laughs> if it was you, we'll take that money. Am <laughs> <laughs> I supposed to do a song and dance? Was that? Just introduce yourself. Oh, okay, so Rob, uh, Eric, got three little kids. Um, been a part of LDI for 11 years now, and really excited to see off-road continue to happen. So I'm really excited for you guys to, to be here. I know that everybody says that all the time, so it doesn't really hold any weight, but I'm telling you the truth, they're all liars. <laughs> 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 Rob is basically responsible for starting LDI off-road, so yeah, he really I am. am. I, I really do believe in it, and uh, you are in very capable hands of Julie, for sure. So glad you guys are here, for sure. Yeah, and 
and I'm Benji. Um, I was uh, Rob's first guinea pig in off road, I think. Uh, <laughs> the only one who survived. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I've uh, been a hope for over a decade. Wait, 12, wait, 2002, 2003, I think. So I have four kids. Um, I'm going to say Paul, and a lot of my work is with students and, uh, and working at the university as well. And, um, doing curriculum things, so a lot of my house hopefully has been in place and things for you, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, Benji's going to come up later and talk about the curriculum. He is master at all things. So yes, our information is there. Feel free to reach out to us with any questions. And we also put, um, most of you guys may know us, and then you might not, is that Hope has a biblical counseling ministry called Restoring Hope. Uh, so if at any point you as a leader or you as someone in off-road, something comes up uh, that, you know, makes you think about something that you're like, maybe I should talk to someone more about this. Uh, we just want to provide the information to get in contact with them. So it's just restoring hope at hopecc.com. And Kim Nelson is our admin uh, extraordinaire. So you can reach out to her to try to find a time to meet with someone if that ever becomes a desire. All right, a few other more detailed type of things. If you turn to page 13, uh, there's just a list of participants, people who are in opera this year. So if you meet someone and you're like, man, I cannot remember their name, you can always check the list. Uh, and then the bolded names are just the people who are leading this year. And then if you flip to the next page, pages 14 through 17, to the end of that packet. Uh, last year we had a group that just kind of reached out to us and said, you know, we feel like we're growing. There are some areas that we'd like to get more involved in and serve in different ways, but we don't know how to do it, or we don't know what's available to us. And so we put together a massive list of ministry opportunities that you could potentially get involved in. So please do not feel like this is us saying, here, do all these things, because we know that you are busy people. Uh, but if there does come a point during this year where you think, man, I didn't realize I was excited about this aspect of ministry, or I really want to try out something. We wanted to give you all the contact information and even just make you aware of some of the opportunities that are here at Hope that you may not have known about. So feel free to look at that if you want. Um, we just wanted it to be there in case you decided this would be needed. All right, now we get to the fun stuff. So when we, uh, as Rob said, offer is what, five years old now? I don't know, I lost track of the two. Okay. 12, I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we are still uh, somewhat of a baby ministry here at Hope. We are still learning. Uh, and one of the things that we have added in the last few years uh, to try and make off-road you know, better or something that you guys can get more out of is something we call the off-road plan. Uh, and when we first introduced this, people thought it was funny that the initials abbreviated to ORP, and the name just kind of stuck. So we still call it the ORP funny name, but it works for us. So, the Offroad Plan is what you probably see on page 7 of this way. Um, and so this is our way of really hoping to get at integration within Offroad. So it would be really easy for someone to do Offroad, to come on the second Sunday every month, go to your cohort meetings, and then never think about it again. But as we did in our exercise, we saw that there are a lot of people in different professions. You guys are in a lot of different neighborhoods. I'm sure you have a lot of other different time commitments that you're involved in. And we really, really want the things that you're learning and the things that are impacting you to impact your whole life. Uh, I think someone said this. Maybe it was Brian. But this is like a whole life thing. We don't see this just as, we just want to develop you to fill holes within the church and to make our jobs easier. We, we really do want to develop you so that you can go out um, and as you're transformed in more closely to the image of Christ, that people would see that, and you would be a witness to the world. And so as we thought about ways to integrate it, um, it gets a little tricky when you have 60 people who all do different things and live in different places and are different people, to give one way to say, here's how you should integrate everything you're learning in opera. Because it's going to apply to all of you in different ways. And so as we thought about that, we came up with the opera plan, uh, which is this document you have here. And I'm just going to kind of walk through some of the ways that we like to think about how to fill it out. So this is, as I told the leaders this morning, this is just a tool, right? This is not like a magic silver bullet. If you just fill this out and stick to it, you will have the best offer experience in your entire life. 
Uh, but it is a tool that you can use as you go through off-road to better integrate the materials and the things we're learning into your life. Um, so a few things that I've read just that kind of stuck out to me as we thought through the work. Uh, this is from a book called Ministry Greenhouse. The premise is this idea of you create an atmosphere for growth. You can't necessarily like create a plan and just stick to it. Uh, and he talks about how we're all called to live. He says, every rightful human task is some aspect of God's own work. Making, designing, doing chores, beautifying, organizing, helping, doing dignity, and leading. Our work then is to reflect God's work. So, as you saw in the activity, we've got a lot of different things that people are doing. None of them are better or worse than the other. They're all part of God's work and a part of God's kingdom. Uh, and we think that's really cool. We want to celebrate that. And that's why we made a, a plan that's very individualized to wherever you are in your life and whatever you're doing. Uh, another quote from Mary talks about, in the simplest terms, calling by the places in life where God has brought you, where God's purpose and your uniqueness come together in love for God and love for others. So as you kind of think through this off-road plan, think about those things. Think about the uniqueness that God has gifted you and the places he's put you in, uh, and how that might come together to love God and to love others. All right, so if you look at the top of the org, uh, there's a section that says personal vision statement. So what is a personal vision statement? Has anybody ever written a, a mission statement or a vision statement or something like this? Last year for LDI Office. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as an example, I gave you what I put down for mine, and then I gave you some questions to think about. And these questions, or similar questions, will be in your packet. Uh, but this vision statement, we just want you to think through, again, if you think about your life as one big thing, not a bunch of sectioned off little things, like, oh, I have my church life, my work life, and my family <coughs> life. But think about it as all part of uh, what God's doing in your life, and how he's uniquely gifted you, and wired you, placed you in a specific time and place. Uh, what is kind of the big picture, where you feel like God's leading you, what you feel like you're called to. Um, so the questions I have up here, think about your core beliefs. So who are you? How has God uniquely made you? Has anybody taken SHAPE here at HOPE before? So SHAPE is a class that we offer at HOPE that kind of helps you think through the different aspects of how God's made you. Uh, the second question, or the second set of questions has to do with your core purposes. So why are you here? And where are you going? So think about, what are you doing now? Where has God placed you? And where do you hope to be? Uh, what do you dream about? Or what are the things that God's put in your heart as like, I'm really passionate about this, and I want to see something happen in this area. Uh, and then the core principles is that last one. So what are the main principles that will guide your life? So here you can think about what scripture, what verses kind of stick out to you, what are things that really... Um, you always find yourself going back to. Think about core values that you have in your life. And so tonight we're going to have time for you guys to kind of get started on this. And it took me a while to write mine. And it'll probably take you guys a while to write yours. So we say write it in pencil, right? Uh, it can be changed. But my example was to continue to grow as a gospel-driven, servant-hearted leader and to develop others to do the same. Uh, and the scripture that kind of helped me form that was Ephesians 4, the passage we just walked through. So think through, where has God placed you? What are you passionate about? What do you value? Try to come up with a big picture statement. And again, the reason we have you do this in community is because sometimes you just need to bounce ideas off of other people to help you figure out what those things are. Uh, and part of that community piece, if you look at the org, on the left-hand side, there's a bar that says context. And this is partly for you guys to get to know each other in your cohorts, because their questions will just be helpful to learn about who you are. Uh, and partly for you to help think through some of these big picture questions. So some of the things it says are, you know, where do you live, which we talked about earlier. What do you do with your time? And then thinking through, what are some key relationships in your life? Uh, whether that's believers, so it could be your small group, or people you do ministry with at Hope, maybe your hospitality team, or just friends you have. Um, and then non-believers. Could be coworkers, family, other friends that you have. Uh, if you don't have anyone for that category, that could be something to think about too. You know, it's, I mean, it can happen. Uh, 
And then the last one is other significant time commitments. That's intentionally vague, so if there are other big things that you do in your life, if you volunteer with a nonprofit or with some organization that takes up a lot of your time, or if you're a caretaker for someone in your family, if you have a part-time job in addition to your full-time job, <laughs> anything else that kind of takes up a lot of your time, just to get you thinking about, you know, again, where has God put me? What are the things that are in my life and the things that I'm passionate about? And I lost the computer again. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions on that vision statement? I know it's a harder thing to kind of start thinking about. So that's why I want you to start brainstorming tonight, start penciling it out, and kind of fill it in as you're doing that. But. Questions? All right. So the next piece of the work, uh, the right-hand side there, is you'll see it's broken into the three pillars that Paul mm -hmm. talked about earlier. And again, the three pillars are something that we hold to throughout all of LDI. Uh, and so we've got biblical thinking, Christ-like character, and ministry skills. And as Brian said, ministry does not just mean what you're doing within the church. Uh, ministry is all of your life, what you do. Uh, I know that that verse in Ephesians 4 says, equip, equip the saints for the work of ministry. Some translations just say, for the works of service. And so this is what you're doing in your life. Um, and we want you to set goals in each of those areas. And I know some of you may be like, yay, goals, I love goals. <laughs> and others of you are like, oh, I hate goals. <laughs> so whichever side you're on, the reason that we do it is just that uh, it can be really easy to get caught up in the everyday of life and to lose track of kind of what you're doing or why you're doing it. And so we want to give you a chance to really think critically about what you're doing in your life and where you want to grow and then have some people in your life who are going to hold you accountable for that. Uh, this is from a, a book that I was reading about, kind of about education, but it talks about how many people fall prey to the problem of good intentions never fulfilled. How many people have had that problem? <laughs> I know I have. Uh, they can readily speak to the importance of lifelong learning and growth, and what they need to do to foster continual improvement. I know all of you guys are excited about growth because you're here, right? You wouldn't sign up for something like Off-Road unless you're excited about it. Uh, but they stop short of developing a viable plan for the same. And I think that's where most of us fall short, or stop short. And so that's why we created the org, is to give you a chance to actually think through those goals and how you might accomplish them. Uh, and again, why am I not just giving you, here are the things I want you to grow in. <laughs> uh, in education, they talk about how adults learn best when they have ownership of, authority for, and self-direction in their education, including diagnosing, planning, implementing, and evaluating, and when they have a readiness and eagerness to learn based on their perceived needs. The truth is, you guys know the areas that you need to grow in better than I do. I just, I, there are so many of you, I don't even know some of you, I've never actually met you. If that's the case, I'd love to meet you afterwards, but uh, there's going to be a lot more ownership and there's going to be a lot more accuracy, honestly, in what you want to grow in if you come up with these things yourself. And again, we want you to do it in community, so we're not saying you have to do this completely on your own, but we do think that it uh, needs to be driven by you, because I can tell you to fill this out until I'm blue in the face, but if you're not excited about it or if you don't see the purpose in it, there's not a huge likelihood that you're actually going to work towards those things. All right. Uh, so goals. How do we create goals? What should we do with them? Uh, we want you guys to set purposeful goals. And so within that, we tonight are going to spend some time creating the goals. And then at the retreat, there will be some time built in for you guys to reflect on those goals. So you'll have some time to get together with your cohort and just talk about how are those areas that you're trying to grow in going? You know, what have you learned so far? Maybe why has it been hard to continue working? Uh, and then at the end of the year, we'll have a, we'll give you guys some more questions to think about to kind of evaluate, you know, what has God done in my life in these areas? And so you can praise him for those things. Um, and to kind of think about what kind of goals would I set next for myself? Uh, and then some of the other things about these goals, again, we talked about them being learner-driven, talked about them being in community. And then the big one that I want to highlight is that this is about faithfulness and progress, not perfection. <coughs> So some of you, when you think about goals, think, here are a bunch of standards that I'm never going to be able to meet. And that is not how we want you to feel. Uh, this is about God moving in you, not about you moving yourself. 
And it's just about being faithful to what God's put in front of you, and not about being perfect. And so I know some of you are like, yeah, yeah, I know. And some of you maybe need to sit and think about that a little bit longer. But I do want to remind you of that. We are not doing this because we want to create perfect little people. Uh, but we want you guys to walk forward in faith and see what God does in your life. And then last is the integration of the three pillars, which we kind of already talked about. So how many people have heard of SMART before? Okay. So yeah, you guys have heard of this. It's just a helpful acronym to think about what kind of goals do I set? How do I write good goals? Um, so the S specific, saying that I want to grow in you just said, I want to grow in Christ like character. Uh, that's pretty big. That's going to be a hard one to, to think through. But if you say, I want to specifically grow in patience with my relationship with my sister. That's something that's a little more specific. It seems a little more manageable. You can, you can actually move forward. Um, so that's the second one, measurable. Measurable is a hard thing when it comes to something like character. <laughs> I don't expect you to be able to chart out your patience and how much you grow in patience. Uh, <laughs> But just think about like, is this something that I could actually see in my life? Like, would I be? Would your Would your sister be able to tell that you're growing in patience towards her if you were working on it? Attainable. So don't set goals that are like crazy out there. Think about what can you do in the next ten months. Um, what's realistic? What's something you could actually work towards? Relevant. So we gave you those three categories that we kind of want you to think through. So. Think about how it might relate to that, and then time based. So the time based is we're saying let's think about this next year of Osgood. So that's ten months. Let's think about what could happen in the next month, ten months. After that, you can set more goals if you want, but we're just looking at this this next year of Osgood. And then I added a little asterisk up there to say that all of these are Holy Spirit dependent, led, and revised. Because again, we know that apart from Him, we can do nothing. And so it can be easy when we start talking about goals and smart and all these different things to start taking it into our own hands. And I want to remind us all that ultimately God causes both of us, right? So Holy Spirit dependent led and revised. Okay, so what we're going to do next is have you guys all break up into your cohort. Um, first, I want you to take some time to, if you already know each other, if you've been in a group before, just catch up, talk about how's your summer been, you know, what are you excited about for this year? Uh, if you don't know each other, please take some time to get to know one another. Um, you can ask how long you've been coming to Hope, what they do, um, why they wanted to do off-road, what are they excited about over the next 10 months. And then the rest of the time, we want you guys to start working on the work. So if you are more of an internal processor, this might mean you are taking some notes on your um, handout and just thinking about it. Uh, but we do want you to share some of your thoughts with your group at some point. If you're an external processor, you've got people in your group to help you think through what would be the goals to set for this next year. Um, and we do, in the welcome packet, we gave you some questions to think through. So if you're like, man, I have no idea where to start with these goals, uh, we gave you, so it's on the back, on page 8, 9, and 10, just some questions to think through. So we took these questions, we modified them from our LDI Trek 1 and Trek 2 applications. So use them if they're helpful to you. If not, you don't have to use them. But uh, they just kind of ask questions like, describe your current state of your relationship with Jesus. Um, what are your dreams for the future? And then thinking through, what are some of your strengths and growth areas in the areas of the three pillars? So like I said, you can spread out throughout the building. We do want you to be back here by 8. Hey, Julie, can I just mention one thing? I don't think everyone knows each other, right? And so if the cohort leaders, if you want to just name out their names, they could stand up and then the cohort members could identify them at least. Is yeah. that helpful? Yeah, uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know most of you, I'm sure, unless you know <laughs> yeah. all of each other. So maybe... Uh, right, I, so if you are a cohort leader, would you please stand up? I'm going to just state your names <laughs> as we go along. Oh, there you go. Stand up. 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 Jeff Shudler. PG. Sarah Fletcher. Meg Bulo. Paul Sev. Oh, Missy Drucker. No, Lisa Freeman. Brian Freeman. Janie Shudler. I'm Laura Mason. I'm Mike Rosa. Albert Steinberg. Nolan Bauer. Brett Kedler. Awesome. Thanks, guys.
So if you have questions still about whose group you're in or what's going on, just feel free to come up to me and I can help get you connected to the right people. Um, and then like I said, please be back by 8.30. Uh, Rob, Benji, and I are available. If you have any questions about the org or about anything else, just kind of call us over to your group and we can come help you out. So. Great. Can I make some announcements? A couple things. Um, we forgot to do this, but those of you who are cohort leaders, um, hopefully, some of you worked on it, uh, take out your calendars, look at your calendars, and work with your cohorts to really come up with the dates you're going to meet. Definitely next month, but sometimes we just encourage you to do the whole year. Get all your calendars and mark those dates out. Places, times, as specific as possible, getting it down. The cohort leaders talked about that this morning uh, when we met, and that's kind of vital to not missing and uh, moving, moving forward with that. So really, be specific with those times. Uh, how many of you did that in your session so far? Okay. Well, it's a third, maybe a half, right? So the rest of you uh, try to do that. I even take the five minutes after this session to do that. Uh, that'd be well worth it. Um, the second announcement is uh, binders. Some of you don't have your cohort members in totality here, right? So what I would encourage is uh, picking up binders that are in the back in that box and bringing it for them for your preparation session coming up. All right. So don't forget cohort leaders, especially pick up. Big binders, one or two, or how many you need for your cohort members that are not present. Um, third, third announcement is core. I wrote core. I think uh, the reason being core would have loved to be here. He's the director of LDI. Uh, he has something a little bit more important today. It's his anniversary. So uh, yeah. we let him slide for this one, but I think otherwise he wanted to be here. He is teaching the next session uh, coming up, so you will see him next month. All right. Um, all right. So. If you want to take out, uh, so I did introduce myself again, Benji, I've uh, been part of Opera for a couple of years, and uh, hopefully the things that we go through here are lessons I made mistakes on, and hopefully we refine things as well, and uh, hopefully if you guys have questions on the curriculum, some of you are teachers and experts in this as well, uh, we're happy to take input through the year, okay? Um, let's uh, take out your, this uh, large binder here, and there's a page number 12, go to page number 12. On page number 12, there is a concept called reflection papers. Um, who likes writing in this room? Okay. Who could care less about writing? Okay. <laughs> I, I'm probably in that camp. I, hate, I have a hard time. I'm a poor writer. I need a lot of feedback, and the mentor can get into it. And so, um, so here we go. Reflection papers, uh, for better or worse, this was a feedback from the last year. It's been building for a little bit of time. We've been uh, staving it off, and finally, we're giving it a go this year. This is a new thing for the year. The cohort leaders received some training this uh, morning on it. And so, when you look at it, at the end of each stream, submit a one-page reflection paper. One page. Okay. If you do double space, it's about 250 words. If you do single space. I think it's 500 words, you guys can correct me on that. And, and you give it to your cohort leader. And so, three total. Those dates are actually wrong. I want you to re write in the correct dates. December 10th, March 11th, and June 3rd. December 10th, March 11th, and June 3rd. So at the start of the next stream is what we're looking at on December 10th. March 11th is the the start of the next stream, but June 3rd is two weeks after our last stream. We don't have anything into June. Question. Already? Is this going to be graded? Good question. We'll walk into that as well. Do you want it to be graded? Um, no, no, no. We're not graded. <laughs> so, so here's the deal. So with the reflection papers, this is for your benefit. And uh, the idea behind it is it's, uh, it's confidential between, it's in your cohort. You would give it to your cohort leader. You email it. Some of you just want to handwrite it. Whatever. At some level, I'd uh, make it legible so you can uh, the cohort leader would be able to review it. And the point is, they're not going to grade it. They're going to uh, reflect back with you in terms of something. So here's the deal. Some of you want some uh, guidance on what it is. So I wrote down in there, broad question here. In what ways is the stream impacting you? So if you don't know what the stream is, take a look at that slide that was up there. Or page number 11. 11. Thank you. Page number 11. And you get to see what the stream is going to entail. And the hope is you're kind of come up with ways to integrate material into your lives, um, discussions in your walk with Jesus. And the big question we talked about this morning is, 
how is this landing in your life? Some of you want much more focused questions, right? So if you wanted to, uh, I'm thinking of stream, um, in, within the stream, going to session number three on spiritual discipline, say you want to pick a topic, fasting, and you want to deep dive into it. And you look through maybe scriptures, find a couple of verses, and come up with your kind of your call it, biblical theology on it. And then also, not just that, you can't just write cognitively. I want you to write about how is this landing? How is this operationalizing in your life? If you can link to your marketplace, that's or wherever you are, stay home dad, stay home mom. I know that just counts just as well, and uh, you you want to put that into your life. Um, if you need more help than that, your cohort leaders are here for that. So it's a little bit flexible for that reason. You can pick any topic within the stream. There's really a lot of things is fair game, but if you want some guidance off, off of that, work with your cohort leader early, and uh, come up with a topic. And sometimes it just comes from your preparation work. You'll see, well, I don't know much about this. They're not going much into this. I want to learn more about it. You can deep dive into that. Sometimes it's just, I got the content, I just want to think about it more. So it's a way to pull that whole string together. I'm going to pause there, I'm sure there are questions on that. Anyone have questions on it? There's leeway to, I would say, maybe go back to the prior stream and research on that as well, correct? Um, technically, we built it so that you'd uh, you can go back to the prior question and talk into that, but try to stick with the same stream within that uh, time frame. So stream one is relatively capped at the end of three months. Um, I think we're relatively flexible on this aspect, so just uh, work with your cohort leader. Yeah. I try to stay within Holy Spirit for the first one. If you go into the history stuff, I'd like you to reflect on history and how that impacts as well. So that's the idea behind it. First time we're doing this, so do we're some, some level of flexibility on that too. And the last part, some of you want to talk about uh, the concept of, um, sorry, I, uh, you think anything? Uh, so completion, it's not graded, confidential. So articulating and writing is a goal. That's the first step, right? Some of you may think, um, let me talk about maybe small group. How many of you are in small group the last year? Fair bit of you, right? In your small group, people don't need to know that you know everything about a topic. But you probably need to do some level of groundwork to know a fair bit about a topic. And, but they do need to find out a way to you to distill those information you learn to a way that is helpful and applies well into their lives. The concept of this, after you learn a fair bit about the Holy Spirit, is to just distill it into your own lives so you can impact your small group, the people around you. Um, and I know, uh, I make a comment here, I, I know writing a paper is, uh, some of you, it's terrifying. Okay. And uh, you want to go far away from it, but uh, if you ask uh, some of the staff members, Julie and Annie Severson, that's a, that's a ministry skill, writing vision statements, et cetera. And those of you in the workplace, articulating what you're thinking about, uh, this is the first step, writing and then maybe speaking out loud. Okay, that's, a, that's the idea behind that. Yeah, and just to clarify, we're not asking for like a book report or for you to like, you know, regurgitate, like here are all the things I learned when we were from the session and to communicate it perfectly, but just thinking through, yeah, how does this impact your life? I think we are in a culture that's so busy, we tend to just, we go do one thing and then we hurry on to the next thing and we don't always take time to stop and reflect on some things. So this is just built in time to reflect, time to think about those things like I'm just saying. Please don't be intimidated it's really by for, it. Yeah, it's your, for your benefit, uh, think of it that way, and um, let us know feedback. Yeah. It's fair to think of it more as like a journal entry than a paper. Yes. Well, yeah. this is this is just... We should just name it that even, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second thing, let's go to page number 11. Page 11, this is a large, big picture look at the streams throughout the last couple of years and, and going into this year. So the concept of this was developed uh, off a couple of different groups. Uh, maybe some of you have heard of Porterbrook. Um, anyone heard of Porterbrook in this room? It's a British, Porterbrook, England. It came through and a similar model to Off-Road somewhat. Um, and uh, I did it the year before I joined Off-Road the first time in 2012. Uh, and they had a good stream development and this theme development. So, the idea is to go through big picture ideas that LDI, Trek 1, and Trek 2 go through, and how do we best reach into the marketplace into your, into your lives. So we don't necessarily go through systematic theology at the length maybe LDI and Trek 1ers go through, but we go through big picture topics 
um, still to know some concepts of biblical theology, systematic theology, so you can be equipped uh, to do the work of ministry, right? And so these topics were brought up after discussions with elders, staff, um, dialoguing with um, small work groups, and came up with something. We put it into paper, and it's been refined over a period of years, okay? So you, we had beta year one, which Rob had me in, beta year two, which was slightly better than beta year one, <laughs> and beta year three, which took off a slightly better, then finally 2015, 2016 hit, and we went into a stream model, and it, it's been a lot more streamlined. And so when you look at relationships, Old Testament church with the first year, um, engagement, New Testament world, Holy Spirit history and stewarding for this last uh, year end. Each of these years stand alone. So if you were to do one full year, you may take a year off or two years and come back into another year and uh, we pull it in. And every year we try to add elements of culture or nuances. So last year we had put in gospel and government right during the elections. Um, hot topic. And it was uh, strategically put in for that purpose. So these, this curriculum is meant to be uh, refined. And, uh, but generally the structure will remain for the three years. So you may get Old Testament, you'll get some of these pieces as well. So going into this year, um, for those of you who want to know, I'm trying to keep this under two hours, right? Two hours. So the concept of this, so Holy Spirit, if you look through it, uh, who is he working in the believer's sin and grace and spiritual discipline? So each of these, uh, if you were to pay, turn to page number, next one is page 19. I think we lose track of pages after 17. But if you were to imagine the page number 19, you get to the Holy Spirit stream, the preparation guide. And if you look at the preparation guide, um, there are objectives right off the bat. This is right before the Kevin D. Young article. And objectives are meant for us to just put it out there, what the stream is that we're aiming for in each of the pillars of LDI. So sometimes when you look at a, a topic in a stream, you may say, this is heavily biblical thinking. But some of the questions we get out are really trying to get at areas of character, ministry, skills. It's not trying to force it, but still trying to have you. It'll be more holistic as well. So biblical thinking um, for Holy Spirit. Discover the person that the deity of the Holy Spirit and the relationship of the Spirit with the triune nature of God. Very heavy language there. The hope is that Cora will define some of those terminology, or when you read it, you'll start to learn what that entails. Christ-like character. Understand how the work of the Holy Spirit empowers and sanctifies us. And that's really the section number two. So the that month is, so next month is Core leading it. The following month is Steve Reichler. And the last month is, uh, of this stream is Natty Severson. So you may have heard of some of those folks. Hopefully heard of Trike. Um, so, and ministry skill, the last part, describing how the Holy Spirit works in us through the means of various disciplines. And that's really Natty's wheelhouse. And you'll see that in the spiritual gifts, etc. That, that's true. Um, we do a key verse. If you look at that, that's also a new addition this year. Um, it's a couple things we've added. And it doesn't mean that one verse captures everything, but we thought diving in on a verse, um, and the idea behind this, cohorts may do this differently, so I want to just encourage some freedom with this, with cohort leaders. Some of you may choose to memorize it, and that's just fair game. We're not mandating that at all. Uh, my only request you, you read it three times, and just uh, putting a number out there, just meditate on it, chew on it, um, and read through that if you want to read through with cohorts. And, uh, and the hope is at the end of, end of that stream, you take a look and maybe have some of these key verses that are out there on the Holy Spirit. Um, other aspects, each of these teaching preps takes a little bit of time, right? So we try to put in elements that are not just books. You have some podcasts, maybe some articles. Uh, we've done some other creative things. Some of them are hit or miss <laughs> we've done in the past. Um, but the hope is to get people that are not, uh, you know, you read somewhere you're running in the morning or in the car ride, you can listen to these podcasts, innovate into life as well. Uh, all right, keep moving along here. Uh, Just so you guys question. know, to access the podcast, if you need the links, they're all in the city. So again, more okay. reasons why we need you guys in that city group. So if you have not joined it, or if you're having trouble with it, please come talk to me before you leave tonight. That's a question. What do we have? <laughs> Chris, did you have a question? Are you... Yeah, I was going to ask about how to follow those URLs. Oh, oh, there you go. I will go to the city. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot okay. of these are going to be electronic documents. Uh, I think Julie's already sent them. Yeah, they're on the city right now, so you can get them already if okay. you're in the group. So um, your city post did not actually include the entire file? 
the entire file of. It only had the one page or. So there's a there should be a post that says September material, September prep material. I just put it up like right before you guys got here. Okay. So if you have, if was it before then that you checked or after? It was before, so yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll so there's check. a new post. The title says September prep material. Just look for that one. Should be good to go. But occasionally we do have. I mean, last year I know we had a couple problems with links not working on the city or things not showing up. So if you ever come up against something like that, please email me right away and I'll try to fix it. Does it matter use a phone versus a computer? It shouldn't, but sometimes the city app is less than ideal. PDFs do not work very well on the city app. A couple more things I'm just going to walk through that people want to know a little bit more about uh, what some of these streams are entailing. So um, questions on the first stream, I you have that in the uh, objectives there, but the, we'll go through some books. There'll be some uh, activities maybe on um, some of those habits in your life that you can develop. So when we go through spiritual disciplines, we may ask you to work together in cohorts of creative ways to uh, actualize that in life. Um, and uh, so Natty will be leading into that. Um, the hope is that you prepare and get some of the juices flowing right when you have core speak on it, and not to have all this, the questions answered, but at least to reflect on it post as well. So you, the stream it will be two weeks before you, you have some sort of content preparation, the main cohort meeting with core, and then afterwards you'll have a reflection exercise as well. So the month is actually hovering <coughs> around the main cohort session. Does uh, that make sense? Right. For those of you who've done it last year, it makes sense. Otherwise, it seems a little confusing. Like you're going into a session, but you're also reflecting out of it. So that stream really doesn't end. That that part of that stream doesn't end until after that session's done. If you go to the next stream, is on history. All right. So I heard one person excited, <laughs> but I think in general people think of history like I don't know what are we learning. Yesterday? What's the point of history? And that's what we'll get at. The aspect that history is important. It teaches us things. And we're going through uh, an interesting um, paradigm in our culture right now of history, right? A lot of things with uh, gospel and race are going on. And so aspects of that may be covered and hinted at, and at least we were not going to avoid those topics at some point. And we'll try to prepare leaders in those regards as well. So get ready for some uh, discussion, and the pastors and elders will be guiding through that as well. So history, acts in the early church of the first one. Um, the main objectives are comparing and contrasting Roman, Greek, Jewish worlds, and church relationship to them. That's really the Acts class. Those of you, maybe some of you have taken that, but it's in a nutshell, we'll kind of go through. Um, a lot of talk about heresies and how the old heresies are sometimes reliving again, our new era here. Um, and how do we respond to those? And how do we get uh, be prepared at some level to work in the marketplace? Um, then we go to the retreat. In the retreat, um, we generally do in a TED Talk style. And these, you may wonder, how do you cover all the subjects of all of history? We do TED Talk style. and. Uh, it's 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, we give folks, and there's some conversations that occur afterwards. We go through how Christianity developed over the period of times. And obviously, we can't go through every single bit. We're going to pick big themes as, as we go through it. Um, and then uh, present day is the last time. When you got, got out of the retreat, present day, uh, I believe Tim Johnson's tagged for this one. This is where discovering the spread of gospel Christianity is uh, going to go through contemporary theological uh, trajectories and a lot of uh, current controversies as well in, in church. So, um, so that's history for you. And at, at some level, I can talk to you more, maybe bore you to tears or uh, get you more enjoyed about it. But it's exciting to see how history can be taught in a three month uh, section for people who uh, may not be interested, try to draw you in, but also for those who have some interest in it, how to energize you to learn more. And the last part, stewarding. And this is something you may not learn a ton in uh, other realms of maybe. Uh, Maybe you do. Seminary does teach us. I'm not sure. But at some level, we're trying to pull in things that are helpful for uh, time management. So time is the first topic there. And evaluating how we use time and what it tells us about the way we think about the gospel. When we talk about busyness. We talk about not busyness. And often in this, uh, in your age group and age bracket, often you're too busy. That may be mm -hmm. how we all feel. Um, when we talk about time, poor soul, which is a lot of different books that are out there, um, how do you develop priorities, etc. So it's in a gospel-centered lens. You may have already done this in the workplace. Some of you are like, I've heard this enough. So we're going to do it in the gospel-centered lens. All right. uh, work is the next one. And uh, Bart Carey will be coming back, the guy you can barely hear. <laughs> yeah, so he's going to come back and do that one. And how we look at work, at, honestly, that's uh, that's key. 
uh, for just about everyone here. Um, and whether you work at home, uh, work in the marketplace, I think just um, uh, learning how our attitude to work with the approaches, um, the way we, what we think about God as well. Uh, and lastly, finances. And this one, I think uh, Ben Wasek and Just Johnson potentially were working on the final details on those two. And if you've taken any financial planning classes, it's uh, probably a nutshell of that pulling into places and how, what does it mean to live within your means? What does it mean to work with debt? Or all these concepts and pulling it into a gospel-centered lens again. Um, I think those are the main aspects of it. Um, let's look at my main notes here. All right, I'll pause there. So I think I want to leave a little bit of time. I know five minutes left. On questions about the curriculum, your expectations as cohort members, and what you're requested and asked to do, and barriers or disagreements you guys have. Question. Yes. How many? What's the suggested like um, amount we should need maybe a month for a cohort group? Great question. So you are to meet one time prior to the next meeting, one one time post as well. Okay. And for so, how long? For how long? We leave it a little bit open. I think there's requirements technically, right, Julie? Yeah. Some. We say, I mean, we leave, so we tell you guys the off-road is a 10-hour a month commitment, right? We want to keep to that. So we say yeah. your cohort time should be no more than two hours. That would help you get to that 10-hour uh, a month mark. But if you want to meet, if your, your group's like, man, we are the best of friends and we want to hang out for five hours every time we meet, Knock yourself out. That's awesome. If you guys meet for an hour and you get through your material and you're like, we feel good. We feel like we are getting out of this what we're putting into it. That's totally fine too. This is the, again, you'll notice a lot of things about off-road is it's flexible to each cohort. Uh, the thing that's not flexible is that we do ask that you meet before every teaching session and after every teaching session. The curriculum is set up for that uh, pattern because we found that when we didn't do the meeting before the teaching session, people felt unprepared. They felt like, I'm diving into this topic that I know nothing about and I can't track what's going on and what they're talking about. <laughs> and then I think if you don't meet after, you're missing that time to really apply it to your life and to think through what did I actually learn and how is it impacting me uh, and what's God doing through it. So we do want to say that that part's non-negotiable. We do ask that you meet before and after, but how long you meet is kind of up to you guys um, and how your cohort functions. Julie. Yeah, John. I have a question for, well, I guess kind of along that line, but did you notice any trends from the surveys from like last year on the cohorts of like what seems like people had a better cohort experience, things that they did and things that they didn't that might, you know, yeah. impact that? Yeah, I would say the cohorts that tend to do better are the ones who really get to know one another, right? I mean, it makes sense when you think about it. If you feel like you're invested in these people, if you feel like you're connected to them, you're going to make it more of a priority. And so with that, you know, again, the flexibility of off-road, we had a group, so my husband Joel led a group for three years, and sometimes he would be like, you know what, we are gonna we met tonight, and we ended up just like watching a movie or something. And at first I was like why are you telling me this? Like, I'm the one who's putting all this stuff together. And then I realized as I like watched their cohort grow is that they had better conversations and got a lot, like got more out of the program because they took time to develop community with one another. And again, I don't want you doing that all the time because like, we do put a lot of work into this curriculum, but I think there can be value in that, right? You need to know your group and know what it's going to take for you guys to be able to have these good conversations. Um, and to really, again, the motto of LDI, I stand by it, is that you get out of it what you put into it. And so I think a big part of that is the investment, too. If you're invested in this, you're going to get a lot out of it. If you're not, it's not going to be that great. <laughs> I'm just being totally honest with you. And so I think the groups where people are more invested are the ones where we see uh, more success. Mm -hmm. if that helps. Really. Other questions you guys have? Any other pearls from cohort leaders? Here. Uh, I think this has kind of already been said, but I'm going to jump back in just to say it again. To be consistent with your meeting times and set them up now if you can. If you guys didn't get a chance to do that, stick around for five minutes quick. Uh, there's a calendar in your binder. If you, uh, I don't know what page it's on because I don't have one in front of me. But it has all of the off-road sessions highlighted in yellow. So that if you're a visual person like me, it's really easy to see when do we need to meet. Um, I will draw your attention to our 
September session is going to be the third Sunday of September, not the second. I said this in an email, but I want to repeat it just so you guys are clear. Uh, the second Sunday is the opening, like the first official service of Hope's Lower Town Campus, which is super exciting and I know many of you are a part of. And so we moved our teaching session back a week so that we could accommodate that. Uh, and then the last session in May is also the third week instead of the second, and that's because the second week is Mother's Day. And we want you guys to be able to spend time with your uh, wives or your mothers or whoever it is that you want to celebrate. So, uh, but yeah, if you get a chance tonight, please try to set up the meeting times with your cohorts. That's another huge success that we see is when people are proactive about setting up times to meet. So. Well, I'll close in prayer here. I'll be standing around. Oh, Josh, uh, if yeah. you didn't finish your work yes. tonight, when should you? You can go into Rob's room and he'll... Uh, 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 I think working with your first uh, session, I think you can feed into that one. I think Prophet was mentioning how many times should you meet. I think you can build some of these things in. I think it's bare minimum trying to get through the material, but honestly, get to know each other. That's a good way to kind of feed that in. You can do some prep work on your own, and then uh, the hope is before within the first month to get that done, put it on paper. So, yeah. Well, uh, we'll stay around for any other questions, yeah. but uh, thanks. We're excited for you guys, all right? Uh, thanks for making it uh, tonight. Hopefully you can get out safely with the Vikings. So. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pray for you guys, all right? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this tonight. Thank you um, for this off-road group of that 60 people here that can come together. Lord, I just pray for just wisdom and just, um, uh, just direction this year. And we pray for the your Holy Spirit that uh, it would empower each of these sessions, give us clarity of thought for the speakers. Um, just pray for joy in the, in the groups, especially folks who've never met each other, just to get to know each other and be honest and vulnerable with each other. And we're praying for just leaders in the marketplace, Lord, that, that we'd be fully devoted to all of your Son. In whose name we pray. Amen. Amen.